All right, so solve an e for x and y to the nearest hundredth. Which one's the easiest one to start with? Which one's the only one we can start with? X, very good. We're going to solve for x, and we're going to be looking at the whole triangle, the whole thing. So in the whole triangle, let's circle our angle. In the whole triangle, 28 is opposite our angle, and x is adjacent to our angle. So we've got tan 34 equals opposite over adjacent. Where's x? Denominator divide. 28 divided by tan 34. Make sure you're in the right mode. So x is 41.51. You all did a good job rounding on your quiz yesterday. You did a really good job rounding. This quiz is a little bit harder than yesterday's quiz, JG. It is like yesterday's, but it's a tiny bit harder. Well, we wouldn't give you the same level of quiz two days in a row, silly willy. Um, there were only two people who rounded badly on the, um, it was an angle, and you rounded to the nearest hundredth. So please be careful if your answer is an angle or a side. I fixed your answers for you. So if you rounded to the nearest hundredth on an angle, I fixed it for you so it wouldn't mark it completely wrong, but you need to pay attention to that today. Um, yes, Sahani, I need to get you the, the form. I'll get you the form on Monday if you ask. Okay, so now that we have X, now we can find Y. Um, what I'm going to do, as I've been doing, is I'm going to keep that number in my calculator. So 28 divided by tan 34, that number's hanging out in my calculator. I'm not clearing it out. It's still there. So now we need to focus on finding Y. And to focus on finding Y, we need to move to a different triangle. We need to focus on the green triangle right there. Compared to the angle, we've got adjacent and hypotenuse. So, sorry, not tan, sorry, sorry. Cosine 34 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. We're looking for Y. Y is what we're looking for, and so that's in the numerator, so we're going to multiply. So I'm going to take the exact x value that's hanging out in my calculator, the whole thing, and I'm going to press times cosine 34. Yes, I'm picky about your answer being as exact as it can be. And so Y is 34.41. Are you all on the same page with me? If we had used the rounded answer, let's see, 41.51 times cosine 34, we would have also gotten 34.41. Okay. I like to always check that out and see. Let's look at our homework answers. Let's keep it moving today. So you can check the answers on the front, but I recommend that when we're going over homework answers that we stick to the back because that's where the tougher problems were. So I'm going over 18 and I'm going over, what was the other one? No, EAG, you're not going to have to draw an altitude on today's quiz. There will just be triangles with other segments already drawn in them for you. Eighteen, twenty-one, 21, and 23. Is that going to be good enough? Because we don't want to eat up too much of our lesson time. Oh, wait, 23, that's a long problem. What part of 23? Okay. Let's start with 18. 
Let's start with 18. Um, so let's look at number 18. This one's a two-step problem. First, you need to notice what kind of triangle number 18 is. What kind of triangle is number 18? It's an isosceles triangle. So since it's isosceles, we know that this y got cut in half. So once we find half of that, we just double it to find all of y. Okay? Let's find x first. Um, compared to the angle, this is opposite and this is hypotenuse. So sine of 69 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. 11 times sine of 69 degrees. And so x is 10.27. And then let's find y. This is adjacent in hypotenuse. So cosine 69 equals, I'm going to call it a, over hypotenuse. Multiply 11 times cosine 69. And you get 3.942. But I'm going to keep that in my calculator and I'm going to double it because I know y is double a. So times 2 and we get y is 7.88. So that's number 18. Let's go over 21. Find the length of the altitude of the triangle. So 54 is our angle. This is x. And this is 6. So we've got tangent. Tan 54 equals opposite over adjacent. Denominator divide. 6 divided by tan 54. Juan, what did you get for number 21? Four point three six. You got the right answer. Okay, so what's your question about it? The length of the altitude is one question, the length of the altitude. Okay, let's look at 23. 23, it's often helpful to know how to find trig ratios without a calculator in simplified radical form. The only ones we can do these for are 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. Those are the only ones we can do them for. Um, so let's draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30, 60, 9. X, X root 3, 2X. So let's find the sine of 30 degrees. Opposite of 30, opposite over hypotenuse. The X's cancel, and you get 1 half. Let's find the cosine of 30. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, the x's cancel, and you get square root of 3 over 2, and the tangent of 30 degrees, opposite over adjacent, the x's cancel, and you get 1 over root 3, which you need to rationalize, and you get square root 3 over 3. So that's how you do trig by hand. You can only do trig by hand if it's a special right triangle. If it's just like, if it says find the sine of 20, you can't do it by hand, unless you have a trig table. Does that clear that one up, Quan? Okay, let's move on to today's lesson. Today's lesson is called Angles of Elevation and Depression. So if you want to title your notes, it would be Angles of Elevation and Depression. So it's taking trig and it's saying, okay, let's use this in the real world. That's pretty much what today is. Why are they depressed? I know, it's sad. 
I'll talk about it in a second. So, <clears throat> angle of elevation. Angle of elevation is when you are on the ground or you're somewhere and you're looking up. I hope you didn't see up my nose. <laughs> Just kidding. You're looking up, okay? So an angle of elevation is when the observer is looking up and it's the angle formed with the horizontal. It's always formed with a horizontal. So the angle of elevation, you're in the boat. Hi. You're hanging out in the boat and you're looking up to the airplane. And the angle that you make with the horizontal is the angle of elevation. Okay. So here's you. Here's the airplane. Here's the ground. You are looking up at the airplane, and that right there is the angle of elevation. So the angle of elevation is on the ground formed by the horizontal and your line of sight. So angle of elevation, on the ground, looking up. Conversely, the angle of depression, oh, let's go ahead, here's some angle of elevation examples. I want to go ahead and do the angle of depression, then we'll do our examples. The angle of depression is when you're up high and you're looking down. You're depressed, you're sad, you're looking down. Okay? So there's Jack and Jill, I guess. And they're up high, they're on the hill, and Jill is looking down. Line of sight. She's looking down at the crown. And it's always the angle formed by the horizontal. So the angle of depression is that angle right there. It's X. Angle of depression. I know, it's the Boy Scout guy again. He's making another appearance. <sighs> so L angle of elevation, looking up. Angle of depression, looking down. I'm going to move on. Now, both of them, I just want to remind you, both of these are formed with the horizontal. They're not the angle formed with a vertical line. It's always formed with a horizontal line. And we'll get more to that in a minute when we do some problems, okay? So, let's go back and do one of these problems. Here we go. A tree casts a shadow 21 meters long. The angle of elevation of the sun is 51 degrees. What is the height of the tree? So I want everyone to draw a picture, please. Draw your own picture. So the angle of elevation is always on the ground. It's always at the bottom. So when you, your picture needs to form a right triangle, and in that right triangle, the 51 needs to be at the bottom. Have you all had a chance to try your picture? I'm going to reveal what your picture should look like. Should look something like that. You've got the sun. The angle of elevation goes right here. This is the angle of elevation looking up at the sun. And the shadow of the tree, shadows fall on the ground. Shadows always land on the ground. So this is 21 meters. We want to know how tall the tree is. X meters. Not XM like XM radio. X meters. So there's our picture. Now with these word problems, drawing the picture is the hardest part. Once you have the picture, this is like super easy, basic. We've got opposite, we've got adjacent, very good, Yeji. Tan 51 equals opposite over adjacent. Multiply 21 times tan 51. 21 times tan 51. What do y'all get? Doesn't say what to round to. Let's do the nearest tenth. How tall is the tree? Y'all need to be quicker than this. Come on. 
Okay, the nearest tenth would be one decimal place. So it would be 25.9. So the tree is 25.9 meters tall. And remember that when we do word problems, our answers always have units. So be careful that you're using your units, okay? Next one. Draw a picture, because drawing a picture is half the battle. A 15 meter pole is leaning against a wall. The foot of the pole is 10 meters from the wall. Find the angle the pole makes with the ground. So you're sketching a picture. Your picture should always, every time, involve a right triangle. So if you're watching this lesson for practice, you're sketching the picture as well. If you're watching the recorded lessons, And your sketch should look a little something like that. <laughs> Except you don't have to have a red brick wall. So you've got a right triangle is what it comes down to. Got a right triangle. The pole is 15 meters. So you should have put the 15 on the hypotenuse. The foot of the pole, so where's the foot of the pole? The foot of the pole is 15 meters from the base of the wall. Sorry, 10 meters. And we're trying to find the angle that the pole makes with the ground. It does kind of look like a chocolate bar, huh? Hershey's. Okay, so what are we going to use this time? Cosine, very good. Cosine of x equals adjacent over hypotenuse. This is when x is trapped in the tan function, not the tan function, the trig function. It's trapped in cosine, so the only way to untrap it is by pressing second, inverse cosine. Since it's an angle, we're going to round it to the nearest whole number. So inverse cosine, 10 divided by 15, and you get a 48 degree angle. Next problem. Uh oh, you can see my kite. Mr. Egg is flying a kite, and he's let out 72 yards of string. The kite's angle of elevation with the ground is 35. If the string is stretched, stretched straight, that's hard to say, how high is the kite above the ground? Draw a picture. Draw and label. You need to label 72, 35, and X. You need to put all of those in your picture. He's flying a kite. He's let out 72 yards of string. There we go. The angle of elevation, the angle of elevation always goes on the ground. It always goes on the ground. How high is the kite above the ground? What trig function are you going to use? We're being fair. We're using one of each. Yay! Sine 35 equals opposite over hypotenuse. 72 times sine 35. Round to the nearest tenth. Very good. 41.3. 41.3. Three yards above the ground. Okay, let's do an angle of depression problem. An airplane pilot sights a shark. Dun, dun, dun. The angle of depression is 26 degrees and the plane's altitude is 3 kilometers. What is the plane's distance from the shark? This one's a hard picture, so I need you to try to draw this by yourself before I show the answer to the picture, okay? I need you to try to draw it. That way you can see what you're doing wrong if you get it wrong. Okay. So there's the airplane in the air. Here's my right triangle. Here's the shark. Let me show you what the biggest mistake people make is. I need you to really pay attention. The 26 degrees 
does not go there. You will never put the angle of depression there, okay? Because the angle of depression is formed with the horizontal. It's formed with the horizontal. So the angle of depression goes here. That is the angle of depression. Now one thing we haven't talked about yet, I was kind of waiting for it to come up, is that something cool happens with the angle of elevation, the angle of elevation, and the angle of depression. What do you know is true about the angle of elevation and the angle of depression? They're alternate interior angles, which means they're congruent. So guess what? You don't even have to keep track of the angle of elevation and the angle of depression because they're always congruent. They're always the exact same angle. So if the angle of depression is 26, the angle of elevation is 26, you can stick the 26 right there and you can be just fine. The only place you can't put the 26 is here, which is the most common mistake. Don't put the 26 where I put the X. Okay? So, let's solve. Um, the plane's altitude is 3 kilometers. This is the altitude right here. This is how high he is off the ground. What's his distance from the shark? Distance from the shark. So, um, I'm going to use the angle. I'm going to use this angle right here because he's in the triangle. This one's out of the triangle. So we've got opposite and we've got hypotenuse. Sine of 26 equals opposite over hypotenuse. It's in the denominator, so we're going to divide. So remember, like I said, the hardest part of these is setting it up. Once you set it up correctly, you really can't go wrong. Let's move on. Let's try another angle of depression so that y'all can take your quiz. 6.8 sounds wonderful. Okay, go ahead and read this one. An observer from a hot air balloon 80 feet above the ground sees two cars approaching. The angles of depression are 40 and 28. What is the distance between the cars? This is a cool problem. I like it. So draw yourself a picture, please. Here's my picture. I've got a hot air balloon and I've got two cars. Now, we obviously can't do anything unless we make some right triangles. So here's my right angle. He sees two cars. He sees one car. He sees two cars. The angle of depression, well, I know it's the angle of depression, but I'm going to go ahead and use alternate interior angles, and I'm going to make it the angle of elevation so that my angle is falling inside my triangle. 40 and 28. Uh-oh. Where do I put the 40 and where do I put the 28? Which one of those angles is smaller? The farther away you get from something, the smaller the angle. So there's my, oh, sorry, sorry. I thought it was 48. So the farther away you get from something, the smaller the angle. That angle is smaller than this angle. As the car gets closer, that angle gets bigger, 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 bigger. The farther away, the smaller the angle. Okay, what are we looking for? X, the distance between the cars, X. So the hot air balloon is 80 feet above the ground. So here's how you're going to solve this one, because it's a couple steps long. So first what I recommend is that you find Y, and then you're going to need to find Z, and then you're going to need to subtract them, because you can't find X. X is not part of a right triangle. 
So you can't use trig to find x. You gotta find y, you gotta find z, and you gotta subtract them. Let me help you. Um, we've got tangent both times around. Tan of 28 equals opposite over adjacent. And tan of 40 equals opposite over, oops, adjacent. Both times we're in the denominator, denominator divide. 80 divided by tan 28, 80 divided by tan 40. I get 42 and 95, probably can't see that. So now I just subtract them. 95 minus, well 95.34028741 minus 42.5367. What is the distance between the cars? They are 52. 0.8 feet apart. I hope that was okay with you guys. Found the two legs and then we subtracted them. The picture is hard. You're right. So you've got homework over the weekend and your homework is drawing lots of pictures. So I definitely expect you to do that homework. Um, we are now going to take our quiz. So go ahead and get your quizzes out.